Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Nick and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be continuing with our Modicon M221 PLC and we are going to be adding a ATV320 drive to our setup and that setup is going to be uh, via the Modbus RTU serial communication. So uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. There's going to be two parts of the video because I'm going to try to start cutting videos down to 10 minutes because a lot of you don't like long videos and I just keep forgetting that. So the first part of the video we're going to be looking at how to set up the drive and uh, how to set up the controller so for them to uh, establish the communications and how to see once the communications is established how to know that it's working. So that's what we're going to do in the first video. And in the second video, we're going to be jumping into and have a look at it, how to, a, uh, well, we're going to start doing some bit of a programming as well. So we're going to set up some uh, program so we can operate our uh, drive uh, from within, from actual uh, uh, the, the M Modicon uh, M221 PLC. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. So uh, with the cable we're going to be using is a standard serial cable that uh, you can buy from Schneider if you wish to, but if you got the clamp that you can make your own uh, network cables, guys, there is, if you go, I'll leave it in the description below, there's a manual in there. So do check out the pinouts, how the, 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 the cabling works. It's literally just basically the pin four and the five is used and eight, four and the five for communications, eight for the grounding. So you can make your own a cable. I am going to be doing my own, my own cable later on. We're going to be adding another serial card to our controller later on. Once we're going to be working a little bit with my Gellis, uh, uh, HMI units. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, cables, all the, all the, all the, the, the two software is going to be using today is going to be a, uh, a sewing machine, uh, eco machine or something, eco machine expert. Uh, I forgot the name of the, something like that. And also, we're going to be using so move to set up uh, so move uh, software for the drive. We're going to be using that as well to set up our drive as well. So, uh, that's what we're going to do today, guys. Both well, softwares are free of charge from a uh, website. So definitely look in the links in the description below. We're going to take you there to a specific of what you're after. So, and uh, use it because uh, it is it is the way it is. It's, 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 it's easy to use, easy to set up. And I don't know why wouldn't you use it. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Before we get started, let's quickly have a look at the Modbus light that it is on the actual uh, 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 controller itself. And that's this guy in here, as you can see, the right, it says SL. So that's the one will indicate to you that there is a communication. So if you're trying to set up your drive and the system, uh, uh, and your, well, your Modbus uh, communication, so network, and uh, that light is not flashing when you're trying to communicate, it means something's not right, something's not set, and the communication is not happening as well. So, and as you can see, the cable in here goes, goes from, uh, there's a driver, it plugs in here in the RJ45 uh, port in here, and it goes into the serial port into the uh, controller. You also can add another serial port if you want in here, which you can add later on, because I'm going to be using this serial port for, for a HMI screen later on. So we're going to be adding a drive for this serial port in the future. So yeah, so this is this is what we create quickly for the start point. So let's jump onto the software, set up the drive first, and then controller and see how to get things uh, communicating and working. So here we are. So my so move is already uh, loaded up, guys. I already made a video on so move. So if you haven't seen this and uh, this is all new to you, definitely check out the Schneider Electric uh, a uh, playlist. And it, the video is in there. How to get it and everything else. Uh, how to get yourself going and understand a bit more about it. So let's go online for the setup. Come on, I just clicked that, didn't I? There we go. So let's load from device. So uh, my device is already reset, so we don't have to drag on the video too much. Quickly show you as well where you where can reset your drive if you wish to do so. I am to, I am communicating via the uh, COM1 and via the serial communications. Uh, again, in the previous videos, guys, check out. There is a package you can buy from Schneider if you wish to get it to uh, communicate almost with all of the ATV drives if you wish to do so. So uh, again, if you're using a lot of ATVs, you definitely, definitely want to uh, get the full package. So here we are. So once we are online, and any, any changes we make online is going to be directly straight going into the drive as well without uh, needing for the load. So first thing what we're going to do, we're going to go into commands. And uh, in the FR1, again, if you look for the FR1, you can do this all in the menu on the drive as well if you wish to. So look for the FR1. 
So under the commands, so and uh, change analog input to uh, we're going to want the frequency to be controlled via the uh, mod bus. So we're going to do here that change in that, and that's pretty much what we all we need to do in here. So we put a little pencil in there. Says right, that's been already written to the drive. We're good to go. So from there on, let's go into communications and then I go into a mod bus of uh, uh, field bus. And as you can see, the device mod bus address. So we have to give it the give the address to our drive, uh, like uh, like any any a, in any mod bus uh, uh, field bus uh, units. You have to give them some form of address. So we're going to give them an address one. So here we go. So everything else in here stays the same. So so the uh, board rate is fine. So for my timeouts and that this all stays as it is. And that, ladies and gentlemen, all you need to do. When it comes down to the drive so uh let's log out so that's it uh, remember you don't have to uh, send them as uh, update uh, the the the, uh, the parameters because they're already done automatically once you are online so we are pretty much done with this somu software next up let's go to a machine expert basic and uh first thing we need to do if you are into configuration this is a continuation from the previous video uh, where we where we already have a look at these at uh, this this setup in here again if you want to see how to get to this point do check out the previous videos so we go into a serial so by clicking on the serial we need to go collect and select the protocol so in our protocol we're going to say is modbus a serial io scanner so basically it's going to be scanning the ios so and click apply so uh, we leave the even baud rate and everything stays the same and we say we are going to be communicating with the RS-485, not RS-232. We're going to be probably checking out RS-232 in the future. RS-232 is literally if you communicate with just one drive, with, with one with, with one device. That's it. So if you will communicate with more than one, you want to use RS-485 or R. Well, it doesn't have RS-222, but so yeah, that's the point. So uh, let's apply that. So once you apply that, as you can see, this change in here for Modbus Stereos IS Scanner, we go into that one. And in here, as you can see, until you select the transition transmission mode, as I said at the very beginning, we're going to be uh, using RTU, and uh, not ASCII. So uh, we're going to leave that as it is. And in here, as you see, select the drive, select the, whichever. As you can see, all ATV drives are here, whole load of them. So we're going to be working with ATV 320. All the ADV, uh, the um, Schneider drives can be configured within the software. And again. Cool part is this, this, this part of the software, which is quite good from Schneider. Thank you very much. It is free. So from there on, just add. And now, as you can see, the 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 drive appeared here on on the a list. And as you can see, that drive's address within the software is going to be percent drive zero. We're going to check out that programming part of it in the next video and what uh, what type of the drive. And also, as you can see, the slave address. And obviously, you can edit it in here, but remember. When we are setting up our drive, we are saying the drive uh, zero is going to be a slave address one. So having done that, we click apply. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Your drive now has appeared right in here on the Modbus serial in here. It says right there is there's our drive. There's nothing else you really need to do. So there's there's uh, all the addresses and everything like is allocated automatically and all the bits that you need to do. Is, is all there so for this video particularly this this is all about setting up so now we're going to go back onto the uh, controller and make sure that we have communication to show you there's one more step that we need to do to get this thing rolling oh and one of the most important things guys i completely forget we need to send this configuration into the controller don't forget that that's a bit of a mistake apologies for that so yeah whatever you configured you do need to make sure you send that into your controller which uh, somehow that skipped skipped my mind. So yeah, let's uh, let's uh, log in and uh, PC to controller. Let's get this in. So update our controller itself, and then we're gonna go into controller and have a look at it to make sure how to uh, well to make sure the connection communication is there and what we need to do. So let's uh, no, let's don't start the controller. So yeah, that'll do. So let's jump on the controller and check things out. So uh, first thing we're going to do, we're going to unplug the drive from the uh, PC and we're going to plug into our communications cable in here. As you can see at the start, nothing's happening. My drive is actually, you will know that your drive is in Modbus 
because uh, it will say it's NST on there, so pretty, pretty much it's, 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 it's ready for the signals, it's ready to accept signals for it. So at the moment it doesn't receive anything, so what we're going to do, we're going to do the full restart now. So we need, because we loaded in configuration already, so the controller now requires a restart. So we're going to load, uh, wait till the drive completely turns itself off. It's got a hell of a, hell of a load. There we go, that's went out really quickly, and let's put it back on. So if all went well and the communication is established, the SL should start flashing. And as you can see, in our case, SL now is a flashing. And that tells you that, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see the SL is flashing and you know that your drive now is uh, connected. Well, the Modbus uh, network is on and it's live and it's ready to be start work with and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in the next video and that's ladies and gentlemen how you get your modbus rtu network going so uh do join me in the next video if you want to look a bit more into the how the programming happens and how can you start interact with the drive uh within a uh, software uh, from a uh, what's that uh, ecostructure machine expert basic software so yeah so don't forget to like the video if you like the video and uh if you uh new to the channel and like what we're doing here definitely definitely join us let's see what happens when we put put this on to a run that should no, 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 not yet, not yet. So yeah, so definitely a uh, subscribe if you're new to channel, and obviously if you like what we're doing here. On that, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you in the next video.